Getting broken up with is rough. It's like a stab to the chest with a rusty knife. For many, it can also be a wake-up call that things weren't going as well as you thought. But now that you know, you want to repair the damage and get your ex back. Most people go about this in the wrong way and make things worse for themselves. That's why I've made this video, to show viewers like you how to get the best chance of getting back into a relationship after a breakup. There are four steps to this process. Don't skip any of them, they are all important for their own reasons. Step one, break all contact with your ex for one month. This is the first point where many people screw up. They spend all their time scrambling to keep contact with their exes, making lots of phone calls, trying to meet up, trying to keep friends with them and support them emotionally, and looking for answers and so on. This may help you feel less insecure about things, but I promise you it's doing a huge amount of damage to your chances of getting back together. Think about it, your ex broke up with you for a reason. Breaking up with someone is hard to do, and once you've done it, what you really want is space to be alone and think about your life. If there is an ex constantly trying to make contact and convince you to stick around, then you start to feel the need to escape and get away. This further cements their resolve to keep their distance. If indeed you stop all contact for a month, a couple of important things occur. Firstly, your ex gets the chance to actually miss you. If you are constantly contacting your ex, they are deprived the chance to realize how much they enjoyed having you around. Have you ever heard the saying, you don't know what you've got till it's gone? So suddenly, losing your presence completely can feel like a huge loss to them. If you make the mistake of hanging around and helping them through this grieving process, then they get all the emotional support from the relationship without actually having one, so they never feel the pain of loss. Secondly, you get a chance to step back and actually work out if you do want them back or not. This is so important. About 50% of the time when I force my clients to break contact for a month, by the end of the month, they start truly questioning if that ex is really so great for them after all. The reality is that most of the time, we're better off finding someone new, but we can only gain that perspective if we give ourselves a chance. For me personally, I've taken this strategy two times in my life. The first time I realized I didn't really like my ex that much as a person, but I was just addicted to having her around providing emotional support, so we never got back together. The second time I realized this particular girlfriend was amazing, and I really did want her in my life. We got back together and we've been together for almost eight years now. Step two. Make a list of the ways in which you personally contributed to the relationship failing. This can be a really important step. Think about what your ex told you when they broke up with you, but also take some time to dig deep and really think about what you did that was hurting the relationship. Now, look through this list and pay attention to the really big important reasons for the breakup and ask yourself two important questions. One, do I want to change this about myself? Sometimes people break up because they want different things. It's sad but unavoidable. In this case, you are better off finding someone new. Number two, how do I change this about myself? Oftentimes, it's really tempting to say something like, I was really jealous in the relationship, so I'm just going to stop telling her when I feel insecure. This is the wrong answer. If your ex suffered a lot because of a psychological difficulty you're having with jealousy, then they know damn well you can't simply make it better by wishing it was so. I promise you that you won't be able to maintain that facade for long. You actually need to have a game plan to fix the problem, not just cover it up as long as possible. When the time comes to talk to your ex about getting back together, you have to be able to prove that you are capable of truly growing from the experience. If you can provide a clear game plan for how that's going to happen, like for example if you say, I've started seeing a psychologist to help me with my jealousy issues, then your ex will feel a lot more trust in a potential future with you. Step three, make a list of the ways in which your ex contributed to the relationship failing. There's one thing I'm absolutely sure of when it comes to relationships, and that's that it takes two people to make a relationship fail. It's never all your fault, and if you want the relationship to work well, you need to know what changes you'll need your ex to make. Now, be careful not to just make a list of petty grievances, like how they chew too loudly or have an annoying laugh. Instead, focus on the really big things that you feel damage the relationship in a deep way. Now, just like before, you have to ask yourself two questions. Number one, do I think they're likely to change this about themselves? Same as before, there's no point asking a person to change something about themselves if they don't want to change. And number two, how could they change this about themselves? What do you think would be required of them for you to really trust that these changes will be made? Step four, organize to meet your ex in person. This shouldn't be too hard if you followed step one and stop contact for a month. But if you've been hounding your ex the whole time, then it might be harder to get them to agree to meet with you. The conversation you have is largely up to you, of course, but I suggest the following structure. One, just catch up, have some casual conversation, joke around a bit, let it feel like old times for a while. Then tell your ex that you've taken a month to really think hard about the relationship, about your role in it failing, about their role in it failing, and that you still believe there's something worth trying to salvage. 
Then tell your ex what you feel is the role you played in the relationship failing and talk them through what steps you have already taken to really work on that part of yourself. Fourthly, tell them what steps you'd be taking in a relationship with them again if they wanted to give it a second chance. Then give your ex a chance to respond. If they are adamant they don't want the relationship anymore, that is sad, but it's okay. Your hard work learning about yourself and creating change wasn't wasted because you still want to be a better partner for the next person you date. Then, if your ex is open to talking about the possibility, then this is your time to raise the things about them you'd really like them to address for the relationship to work. This is a really important part of the process because it gives you self-respect and ensures that if you get back together, you get the relationship you really want. Lastly, give them time to think it over if that's what they really want, but set a limit. Sometimes your ex wants to think things through and that's completely acceptable. Set an amount of time, like a week, a fortnight, or even a month but agree to meet again after that time to reach a final decision. Don't let the thinking about it phase go on indefinitely. There's something really important that I wanna highlight from this process. And that's the fact that there is absolutely no manipulation going on here. Sure, there are lots of ways you could manipulate your ex into getting back with you. There are lots of really great manipulation tactics you see in many other videos on YouTube, but here's why you should avoid that like the plague. Manipulation can get a result, but at the same time it creates resentment. Have you ever been manipulated into helping someone with a chore or a task? How did it feel helping them out while feeling resentful about it? Do you like the person more or less because of it? The same thing happens in a relationship. I've seen so many times people manipulate their partner into getting back with them, only to see it end months later in a much more extreme and painful way than it ended the first time. By following the steps above, you are taking a healthy route to giving a relationship a second chance in a way that's most likely to guarantee long-term success. If you still don't get your ex back with this strategy, then they are without a doubt the wrong person for you. Or either of you are in the wrong place right now to make a relationship work. Sometimes it seems unfair, but there is absolutely nothing you can do to change these situations. Have you successfully gotten your ex back in the past? What worked for you? Would you do it any differently next time? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Hey guys, do you get frustrated approaching women and then getting rejected? I'd like to invite you to my free 12 video training series where I'm going to show you how to make such an amazing first impression before you even say a word that rejection will soon become a thing of the past. See that button down there? Don't procrastinate anymore. Go ahead and click on it and I look forward to working with you.